Okay, we're back inside my van and I'm in the process of remodeling. I thought I'd take a moment to talk a little bit about diesel heaters and a specific kind of diesel heater that I don't recommend that you buy for your van. So about a year ago, I was really interested in putting some kind of heat source in the van that wasn't just a Mr. Buddy heater or a propane heater that releases a bunch of moisture. And I got really excited when I found these cheap Chinese diesel heaters. So I kind of looked around the van, picked a spot I thought would work well. I have a battery box in the floor of the van that's not being used anymore. And I thought, well, that's kind of perfect. There's already a hole in the floor. I can just put a heater there and have the exhaust and everything run out right through the floor. So that's what I did. And I thought, what would make this even simpler? I could get one of the all-in-one units where it's all put together, it's already done, and all I need to do is connect it to power, to a power source and connect the exhaust. So I ordered one, and that was kind of a mistake. So the number one reason I do not recommend installing one of the all-in-one units into a van or a camper is simply because it's not very safe. The design of the all-in-one units makes it so that the exhaust connection is actually sitting up inside the vehicle with you. It's not sealed to the exterior of the van. There's just a simple hose clamp connection preventing exhaust from leaking to the inside of your camper or your van or whatever. Whereas if you get a diesel heater that comes with all the individual components, there's a big rubber gasket and you, you mount that directly to the floor or a, to a mounting plate um, uh, in your vehicle or your van, that that rubber gasket seals that exhaust connection to the outside of the van or the vehicle. And uh, if it leaks, it's not going to come back up through the floor or get into the inside of the van if it's installed properly. So my first kind of red flag was the fact that I mounted my all-in-one unit above the spot where I wanted, and I couldn't even get to the the hose clamp to tighten it um the design of the case made it so that you couldn't really get a, a screwdriver in there to turn the hose clamp or let alone a, a an extension or a socket to put a, a socket on the the hex head and uh i ended up having to bend some of the sheet metal and pry it apart so that i could get an extension in there and tighten the hose clamp and the hose clamp by the way is garbage it was an absolutely terrible hose clamp um, i think no matter what diesel heater you get if you get one you need to upgrade the clamp to what's called a micolor clamp it's a much better higher quality hose clamp i couldn't get it tight enough and i tried multiple times and you could just yank the exhaust pipe completely off even if it was t cinched all the way down so i found these actually really helpful uh facebook groups that are all about um diagnosing issues that people have with diesel heaters and showing how to install them and things. And uh, everybody said you need to upgrade the clamp and then cut some slots in the actual exhaust pipe so that it can crush and squeeze onto the exhaust port. So I did all that and I even added some exhaust paste to that joint and I was finally able to get it to mostly seal. Um, the first time I ran the heater, uh, Sure enough, there was exhaust coming in. And uh, I tried multiple ways of trying to make it work. And eventually I did what a lot of people end up having to do is disassembling the unit and uh, kind of installing it as if it was an individual component kit to start with. However, I, I took the lid of my battery box and cut holes in it to, to match the exhaust ports and everything. And I turned the lid of my battery box into my mounting plate and uh, kind of reassembled the all-in-one case onto the, that uh, battery box lid. And I got it put together, got it working, got it sealed up so I could run it and use it. Um, and it worked okay. That was all a big headache that would have been avoided had I just bought the individual component kit. Um, now I have, now that I'm redoing my interior, I moved my heater again, completely discarding the, the, the all-in-one case. And I now have it mounted in the back of my van on a, a mounting plate that I made, and it goes directly through the floor. Um, it's sealed up, it doesn't leak. 
and it actually ended up being easier to to get to the exhaust clamps and everything because you just climb under the van put a wrench on them get them tight uh, i wish i had done that right from the start now another issue um with the all-in-one unit is the design of the fuel tank the problem is in the the connection for one my fuel connection actually leaked um, so diesel would leak out um, from where the the fuel line enters the tank uh, I just had to tighten that there's a little nut on there I had to tighten it a little bit and then it sealed up fine but the other issue is that fuel line comes in just above the bottom of the tank so when the fuel gets below the line or below the level of the line the heater shuts off because it thinks it's out of fuel but there might be a liter of, of diesel still in the bottom of the tank kind of sloshing around um, but the, the heater can't pick it up the individual component kits come with different gas tanks that are actually made to mount to like a wall they have like mounting holes to them and they either have the fuel line come from the bottom so that all the fuel can reach it or they come from the top with a hose that reaches down all the way to the bottom of the tank. So I'm gonna have to order one of those style of tanks, which is gonna cost me about another 30 or $40. Again, something that could have been avoided if I had just ordered the individual component kit. So that's not to say that the all-in-one units are all bad. Um, I just don't recommend them for installing in a vehicle or inside a camper, but they do have good uses. A lot of people will use them um, for workshops, sheds, garages, things like that where the heater itself is mounted someplace outside, kind of protected from the weather, where the only thing that's coming into the building or the enclosure is the hot air that the heater is pushing out. So those are good applications for it. Uh, I did see a guy on YouTube. I, I can't remember the channel, channel name. It was something outdoors, something. Uh, I'll put it down below. And um, he actually made an argument that he bought the all-in-one heater so that he could use it in multiple places. He could, he could take it. Uh, to his garage or whatever and just put the the hot air in or the shed and he even made a connection on his camper where he sets the the all-in-one unit outside of the camper but plums the hot air and connects it to uh, a connection point on the floor of his camper that then blows the hot air throughout the camper and that actually seems like a pretty decent idea if you know you want to have it um, portable and, and be able to move around a lot of people do something similar to put hot air into their tent or a rooftop tent. So so there are good uses for them. Like I said, I just do not recommend them for inside of a vehicle. And this is just uh, my, my opinion. Um, I know there's people out there who put all-in-one units in a camper and they'll say it's fine. They've had it in there for a long time. They've had no issues. I'm not dead yet. Um, I just put a carbon monoxide alarm in there, which you should do. But I don't see it being worth the risk. Uh, um, it when it's just not necessary especially if it's going to be permanently mounted you might as well permanently mount a version that's safer so that's all i have for this video if you guys are subscribers i have a couple more videos coming out um as i get through the the renovations of the interior of the van and then we can get back out there and go on some more adventures so uh i will see you guys on the next video if you like to follow along with the rest of our adventures make sure to subscribe and to make sure you don't miss out on any other videos click the notification bell as well.